In the light of these passages and their context, the title Son of God is not in itself a designation of personal deity or an expression of metaphysical distinctions within the Godhead. Indeed, to be Son of God, one has to be a being who is not God. It is a de designation for a creature indicating a special relationship with God. In particular, it de denotes God's representative, God's vice regent. It is a de designation of kingship, identifying the king as God's son. So if we accept this as, as true, if we believe the, the, the Jews' own you know, writing and understanding, then that makes God greater than Jesus. I mean, the, the son, Jesus, of course. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, first of all, as Colin Brown said, uh, you know, uh, son of God means you're not God. It's it's uh, self ex what's it called self explanatory, mm -hmm. and also because get guess what the New Testament says so. Uh, God is the Father, Jesus the Son of the Father. I like that text by the way, Second John three. Very very uh, powerful passages here, and um, note uh, verse forty three the use of name. How name is used there? It's not a literal name. It's the authority offered in the name of my father, in his authority, in his stead, you know, as, as the supreme agent that he is and he was to, to these people. So God is greater than the Son, and the same is for Paul. And uh, actually, we'll quickly go to the, the very powerful 1 Corinthians 15. So this is the scene of the coming kingdom. When the kingdom comes, what happens? Verses 22. So it's obviously here that uh, God is greater than the Son. Uh, note this from the Net Bible on Luke 3.38. This uh, caught my attention as a little aside. Mm -hmm. So we know that Adam is called Son of God. The reference is not to a divine being, but to one directly formed by the hand of God, He's made in God's image. I think you can apply that almost word for word to the second Adam, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Jesus. So uh, I found that interesting because they would never say such things about the second Adam. Mm -hmm. Oh, the first Adam, oh, yeah, sure. He was created. He was mm -hmm. to God. But look, there's a guy called the second Adam that fits the same bill. Why don't you recognize him mm -hmm. the same way? Another very important thing is the rock. What is this rock? So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the passage in Matthew 16. So in uh, Matthew 16, you have that great passage. Uh, so uh, Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And then Jesus says, you did not learn this from any human being. So this is via divine revelation. On this rock, Jesus ends, I will build my church. Mm -hmm. So what is the rock? Let's compare this to 1 John 5 and those verses. That I am the human Messiah, the human Son of God. And to have the Son, you have the Father, obviously. Yet, you are God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, consubstantial with the Father, is a salvation issue. So I'm just throwing this out there as a question, not so much as a as a, a an attack on 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 the system. It's that Jesus is the Son of God, mm. and you have life because you, you said that. That's the declaration, and that reminds me of John twenty thirty one. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's quickly go to Second Peter. Here's another great uh, parallel to this. Second Peter one. You'll see uh, that Peter there in 16 starting. There's a thing called subordination. This is uh, uh, Anthony's cousin, J.T. Robinson. A very important work done on John. Uh, subordination of the Son, the one true and only God, is never in doubt in John. That, that's an amazing statement. And most scholars would agree. Subordination simply means that the Son is... is uh, subordinate, mm -hmm. lower in the in the uh, pecking order, as it were, yeah. and the figure of the Father. The Son is sent. So here are just some quick uh, points of why this is, and this is John. 
this is the uh, Trinitarian gospel, right? The Aryan gospel, the gospel of people who don't uh, align with the rest of the gospels. The Father gives or grants to the Son, which is mm -hmm. John 5. He gives what? Life. Mm -hmm. That That's a key passage, by the way, John 5. Mm -hmm. Someone else gives Jesus life. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, let, let me be stronger in my language against orthodoxy. The Father grants life to the Son. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Son. That's, that's big. Jesus consistently calls God, guess what? O Pater, mm -hmm. the Father. Tomasino, Judaism before Jesus. I found this interesting, uh, just the underline. This is a, a sort of summary of the Son of God in rabbinic Judaism. At the beginning of the creation, the world of the world, the King Messiah was born, who arose in God's thoughts before the world. So that's how he, you know, so-called pre-existence, according to the ancient rabbis, was in God's mind, in God's foreknowledge, as it were. And that's what uh, we call ideal, ideal pre-existence, if you want to talk about Messiah pre-existing. Uh, Son of God in the church, fathers, check this out. <clears throat> So Ignatius, writing probably one of the earliest church, so-called church fathers, mm -hmm. uh, says this, there is one physician who is both flesh and spirit, born and yet not born. Begotten and unbegotten is another translation there from Ignatius' letters, who is God coming flesh, true life in death, born of Mary and of God, first passable, and then impassable, Jesus Christ our Lord. You see how early this went astray with such language? This is a speech given at the Irish House of Peers in 1756.